Okay, so in this video, we will try, if possible, to evaluate a given improper integral. So why is this integral improper? Well, clearly, it's not of type 1, as we have a finite range of integration. So if this is to be an improper integral, it must be of type 2. So our function, in this case, ln of x, must have at least one discontinuity between 0 and 1. Well, to see this, let's sketch a graph of ln of x. We know that ln of 1 is equal to 0, and we know that as x approaches 0 from the left, ln of x approaches negative infinity. And so we can see where our discontinuity lies. Ln of x is continuous, there is no break in the function everywhere between 0 and 1, except at 0, where 1, it is undefined, and 2, x equals 0 being a vertical asymptote. So right away, we know we cannot try to evaluate this definite integral that is an improper integral with the fundamental theorem of calculus. We can't do this directly as we have a discontinuity that is part of our interval of integration. Well, as always, we'll try to avoid the problem first and then with a limit obtain the initial improper integral. Well, the problem here is 0, and the infinite discontinuity of ln of x at this point. So instead of starting from 0 and ending at 1, we'll start a little after 0. So imagine that t is a slightly positive real number. And now you can, of course, integrate ln of x from t to 1. And from t to 1, as long as t is strictly between 0 and 1, ln of x is clearly continuous, there is no break in the function, and so now we can evaluate this definite integral with the fundamental theorem of calculus, as the two conditions are satisfied. 1, the interval is finite, and on the interval, the function we're trying to integrate is also continuous. But clearly, this integral is not equal to this one. To obtain the original improper integral from this one, we have to let t approach 0. And this will do it, but we have to be careful. If we leave it like this, we're actually wrong. Because if we simply say t approaches 0, t could be slightly larger than 0 or slightly smaller. But if it's smaller, we're overshooting our discontinuity and we're not avoiding it. So we have to be very careful. We have to let t approach 0 from the right, from the positive side. So t must be always slightly bigger than 0. And now we're good to go. So we will first evaluate our definite integral with the fundamental theorem of calculus and then take the limit. As always, all we need is the antiderivative. So let us find first our antiderivative, and then we'll go back to the definite integral. Let's evaluate, or let's find, the antiderivative of ln of x here. If you recall, this is a classic problem of integration by parts, where we let u be ln of x, dv be what's left over, dx. Of course, now we need to find our du. Well, the differential of u is the differential of ln of x, which is, of course, 1 over x dx. And we need our v, and to obtain v from dv, we integrate dv. Well, that's just the integral of dx, which is simply x. And as always, when we find the v in integration by parts, we do not need to add plus c. So, what do we have now? Again, integration by parts states that the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. And now it's just a matter of substitution. 
u ln of x times vx. So we have, if you prefer in the opposite order, x times ln of x minus the integral of v, which is x, times du, which is 1 over x dx. And now we have a trivial integral. x times 1 over x is 1, and so we have the integral of dx, which is, of course, simply x. Plus, of course, c. Now that we have our antiderivative, we can go back to the definite integral. To evaluate the definite integral, we need to evaluate our antiderivative. We can drop the plus c. And here, if you want, you could factor in x, but I won't do so. I'll leave it as x ln of x minus x. That is our antiderivative, which again we evaluate from t to 1. And this is again the fundamental theorem of calculus. So what do we have now? Well, the antiderivative at 1, 1 times ln of 1, but ln of 1 is 0, so this goes away, minus 1. So that is the result of the antiderivative at x equals 1, and of course minus the antiderivative at t. So we'll have minus t ln of t. Minus minus, which is plus t. So there are two parts here. There is the t and there's the t ln of t. Well, this part is trivial. As t approaches 0, t approaches 0, so this term goes away. But we have to be careful with the t ln of t here. It is true that t approaches 0, of course, as t approaches 0. But if you look at the ln function, as the argument approaches 0 on the right, ln approaches negative infinity. So what we have here in this part is a non-trivial limit. We have a 0 times a negative infinity something small times something big, anything can happen. What we must do now is to find a clever way of turning this into a L'Hopital's rule problem. Well, one thing we'll also separate is the negative 1. As t approaches 0, negative 1 is always negative 1. We can pull this out of the limit. And if we also factor the negative, so negative the limit, as t goes to 0, from the right, and as we have just said, this leaves us with t times the ln of t. Which gives us a 0 times negative infinity case. And this is again a non-trivial case. Well, I can simply rewrite times t as 1 over 1 over t, and then I will be able to apply L'Hopital's rule. If I divide by 1 over t, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, which is t over 1, which is simply times t. And now the case is interesting. As we have just said, as t approaches 0 from the right, ln of t will approach negative infinity over, as t approaches 0 from the right, 1 over t will approach positive infinity, as 1 over something small is something big. Now that we have a negative over positive infinity, we can simply use L'Hopital's rule. So, before I differentiate, or I shall differentiate right away, the derivative of ln of t is 1 over t over the derivative of 1 over t, 
And if you think of this as t to the negative 1, you will get by the power rule negative 1 times t to the negative 2, and that is negative 1 over t squared. Let's simplify the expression. So we have 1 over t, and again if you divide by a fraction you multiply by its reciprocal, which will give you, well, t over negative, t squared over negative 1, which is negative t squared. So we have negative 1, negative the limit, as t goes to 0. Negative t squared over t is negative t, and now we have a trivial limit. As t approaches 0, so does negative t. And our final answer is quite simply negative 1. So the improper integral converges, and it converges to negative 1. And so if you integrate ln of x from 0 to 1, even though at 0 we have a vertical asymptote, the result is exactly negative 1. And you can think of this in terms of area, right? Between 0 and 1, as the ln of x is negative, the integral from 0 to 1 of ln of x will return the negative of the area of the region. Well, so now we have this region that is again infinitely long, as we have a vertical asymptote, and the area of this region happens to be exactly 1. And again, the answer is, is not 1, but negative 1, as the definite integral, if it does exist, returns not the area, but the net area below the curve. So whenever on an interval the curve is negative, the definite integral here, given that it was improper, if it exists, will return the negative of the area. Therefore, negative 1. And that's it.